Hello, and welcome to Alcohol Free Radio. I'm your host, Chris Becker, and I'm excited to have you join us. Whether you are new to the amazing and growing alcohol free community or someone who is already familiar, we hope you enjoy our program. This is where you can hear from some people making a real difference, whether as brewers or producers of amazing beverages, influencers in the community, authors, storytellers, and more. We aim to break it down and bring it all together. Our goal is simple, to build awareness about this great community and to help make alcohol-free fun, easy, and tasting great. So here we go. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. It's Daniel Stiller from Better Roads with another iteration of Meet the Makers. And today, I'm really excited to introduce you to Ellie from Calino Drinks. Now, Ellie, did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> Pretty much. This is a question I get asked most of the time. Uh, it's Caleno. So it's the tilde over the end just gives it that extra <laughs> no. It's a Spanish name. Caleno. Well, it's a Spanish name. Okay. How, how did you come up with the name? So um, the name has uh, South American origin, essentially. Uh, a lot of my family live in Colombia, which is a place I spent a lot of time when I was younger and also uh, when I was working on the brand was a place I, I gathered a lot of inspiration and Caleno is the name you give to someone if they are from uh, the city of Cali in Colombia which is also famous for being the unofficial capital of salsa. Everyone goes to dance, people love to have fun, people love to um, go out and listen to music. So it felt like a very fitting name for the brand that I wanted to create. Well, you know, you mentioned fun and, and joy, and that's something that, you know, as I was reading more about you, joy uh, plays a really big role in, in what you do, and it seems to be a big part of your inspiration. Yeah, it does, because I think if I, you know, five or six years ago when I came into this space, one of the things that really struck me was how much it was lacking in joy. And by that, I mean, as a 20 something year old going out uh, in, in the UK where I lived and not drinking at the time I was doing, I was partaking in dry January, but there were plenty of times where I didn't want to drink just during the week or if I was taking time off and it felt like um, if you were in that situation the joy would just be sucked out of your night because you'd usually be offered a pint of squash a diet coke (laughs) or a glass of water (laughs) yeah yeah. and we've we've seen that where you know there's been a big transition from I'm choosing not to drink because I have to, to I'm choosing not to drink because I want to. And, you know, we have to get away from the fact that choosing not to drink is not a punishment. No, no, exactly. And th- and that's really what I saw kind of entering the space. And it's really what sparked uh, the idea to, to create something. Because at the time I worked in the alcohol industry, which was hugely innovative, exciting. There are a lot of people really passionate about the brands in the space. However, coming from that space and still in the drinks industry, but hey guys, I just want to drink less alcohol. It was like you were being punished um, and there was a huge stigma around it. And I couldn't understand why why it was that way. And I, I really felt like I wanted to change that and change people's perceptions of what it meant to not drink but actually still bring a lot of enjoyment and fun and energy to the category. That was something I felt really passionate about, still do feel really passionate about. And as an innovator in the space, have you, have you seen that narrative change and have you seen that embrace of fun, of joy with the category? I think so. Yeah. It's definitely shifted a huge amount since I came in. I think when I was looking at the space, there were, I could count on one hand the number of brands that you would class now as non-alcoholic, you know, adult premium non-alcoholic drinks. By that, I mean non-alcoholic beer or non-alcoholic spirits. It was severely limited uh, globally. (laughs) There just was not the availability. And as the years have have progressed and and this concept and this category uh, has grown its awareness and education uh, has been there for, for the consumers, I've really seen 
brands step up to the plate and and provide a better experience for the customers because that's what they want and and with that comes better cocktails better presentation uh, more unique flavors and really delivering on that experience that important experience that that consumers want when they're drinking but don't want the alcohol so I've definitely seen it and I think Caleno has really tried to play a, a key role in in delivering that through flavor we have some interesting tropical uh, ingredients like pineapple papaya inca berries coconut we really have fun and play around with different flavors uh, we try and make those really accessible and also just when we show up as a brand whenever we come out to events we're doing a big summer campaign at the moment and uh, we're showing up in our in our kind of bright yellow jeep called shakira and we're bringing music and we're bringing dancers and it's all about just disrupting what people think about not drinking so so this really was born from a pursuit of joy and the you've, that that inspired you to create the product and it obviously inspires your advertising campaigns and promotional campaigns how did it inspire the product itself now you you're speaking to you know some of the ingredients and everything but how does that how does the that joy um, come through in the product itself yeah, I mean, I mean, two things. When I think about the inspiration uh, for the brand, and then and then the products themselves, of which we have two, light and zesty, and, and dark and spicy, um, it really comes back to a, a kind of quite an important trip that I took around five years ago back to Colombia, um, where I hadn't been for for over well over a decade, and I decided to actually travel around uh, the country, and I think. Inspiration came in two forms. You know, I was visiting these incredible fruit markets uh, filled with uh, fruit bigger than I'd ever seen it before. You know, <laughs> you, you have fruit in England, but nothing like I'd seen here. I think Colombia is the second uh, most biodiverse country in the world. And I really uh, enjoyed when I was drinking cocktails. I really enjoy uh, cocktails with those kind of more co- coconutty, pineapple fruit flavors um, but still with that sophistication that you might find in a gin or rum and so I think that provided a lot of inspiration for me in terms of actually uh, formulating the recipe and coming together with the flavors and, and creating that and then on the side of joy I think it was going to some of these places uh, I can think of Cartagena, Guatape, some towns and cities in Colombia which are quite literally paved in color <laughs> you know you walk down the street and the whole town is painted in in all these kind of bright vibrant colors and you couldn't help but visit these places and feel happy yeah and feel a sense of positivity so that was something really important so that came through in the packaging and the labels and and the brand itself I wanted it to it was very purposeful I wanted it to stand out on shelf so someone would go into their local bar or into their supermarket and say hang on a minute that looks really interesting that sounds out that catches the eye I want to know more about this brand and and just as you were explaining that to me I was picturing these 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 streets as you said paved in color and you're right a smile comes across your face and you know I was you know, I'm starting to picture these fruit stands with these, you know, this enormous, fresh, you know, intoxicating fruit smells. And um, you know, in, I have experienced that with um, with your product. And, and one of my uh, one of my favorites is dark and spicy. Um, and so I, I wish I think what I'm missing, though, is the, the salsa side. I, I probably need uh, I need some salsa inspiration. I wasn't blessed with that. Uh, that um, <laughs> that Latino well, vibe, I mean, <laughs> but uh, maybe maybe that's the next uh, the next iteration as it comes with the uh, salsa instruct uh, lessons on dancing. But um, when what's the what's the perfect way? Like if you could imagine the perfect pour of of your dark and spicy. And we'll get to light and zesty next, but next. But what what's your perfect pour? How do you want people to experience? Uh, dark and spicy. And, and I'm thinking like the glass, the music, everything. What's that perfect experience of, of uh, dark and spicy? Perfect experience of dark and spicy. Oh God, it depends on the mood, but okay, right now it's a really hot day. I'm kind of getting to the end of the day. 
I want something refreshing, grown up. I'm starting to thinking about cooking my dinner. And so I'm going to get, grab a bottle of dark and spicy. I'm going to get a tall glass, fill it with ice, pour out a double measure of dark and spicy, which has these really rich pineapple, um, coconut flavors on the nose. You'll also get some black cardamom in there, some cola nut, some hints of vanilla and some fresh lime. Pour that into the glass over your ice. And uh, I would also grab a bottle of ginger ale or ginger beer, depending how, you know how okay. high on the spice level you want to go. Ginger beer is a little bit more fiery. So again, depends on the mood, but normally I will have a bottle of ginger ale in the fridge and I'll pour that out. And then I will grab a, a lime, cut it in half, squeeze out some of the lime juice from, from one half and give that a quick stir. If I have a pineapple lying around, which I sometimes do because I love to eat fresh fruit, <laughs> I'll grab a couple of leaves, pop those down the side and then um, add my lime, uh, the, the other half of my uh, lime to, to garnish it. And that is, that is the perfect way to enjoy dark and spicy. It's super refreshing, loads of great flavors coming through and it's super, super simple. Well, and you've created well. an event, you've created a treat for yourself. Yeah, and I'll probably be dancing around my kitchen listening to uh, my Colombia Latin playlist, which has been a carefully compiled over the years. But I just find you, you mentioned earlier about dancing and music. And for me, I get a nat you know, people get buzz from alcohol, but I get a natural buzz from music and dancing. So that's why I felt it was really important to bring those few things into the brand because I think. Um, we are, we're conditioned to get this buzz from alcohol, but actually we can get buzzes from all around us. And I think people sometimes forget that. And so of, you know, if I want to be enjoying my night, that's exactly what I'll be doing. I'll be cooking. I'll be, you know, mixing up some different flavors in cocktails with Caleno and I'll also be turning up music. Well, and that that's raises such an important point is we associate alcohol with all that enjoyment, a lot of the times it dulls that enjoyment. It it makes us forget about all these other aspects of our lives that inspire us, that give us that buzz. And But Ali, I would be remiss if I did not get a recommendation of an artist on your playlist that everyone can start to look up and enjoy. Oh God, so many to choose from. Um, well, I tell you what, I went, I recently, after two years of waiting, um, I really went, I went to go and see Maluma, mm -hmm. who is um, a really great Colombian artist. I've been following him for three, four years now. And he finally uh, managed to do his, his worldwide tour and he came to London and I went to go and see him and he has, he has a brilliant range of songs. If you're a fan of J Balvin, maybe Shakira, like it's just, he's a brilliant. I would definitely recommend uh, getting him up on your Spotify playlist. So, so now we have the drink, we have the environment, we have the music. The only thing that's left to do is dance. So <laughs> yeah, that, that is amazing. I think that's like, let's, and that's what this is all about. That's, that's the joy. This is the party and it's okay to have just a party of one to treat yourself, to enjoy. Um, that's, uh, that's amazing. Thank you for that. Now, is, is light and zesty a different feeling? Is it a different vibe? Light and zesty. So both of them, when people ask me the difference between the two, I'll always say, look, both of them are very much underpinned by a unique set of different tropical ingredients. Um, and, and also I think they catered to um, different mixes a lot of the time. So light and zesty is a lighter, um, zestier, more refreshing drink. Normally I would pair with soda or tonic. can also be used in cocktails, whereas dark and spicy, I would mix with a ginger ale or soda if I wanted to make a mojito potentially, um, and also cola. So it, I would say it depends on your mixer preference or your cocktail preference. Um, they're both quite upbeat vibe. I would say both of them you can take along to a party with you. You know, if you wanted to make a rum punch and, and take it to a barbecue with your friends, I'd say 100% dark and spicy. 
With light and zesty, if it's a super hot day and you just need something to really cool you down, something really, really refreshing, I would say light and zesty. I love just enjoying that when I've got friends over. Um, just get the ice out. Um, tonic is normally what I would mix it with, but also soda and adding just something simple like lemon juice or lime juice just to add that extra zing and zest to it is also perfect. Um, and again, if you've got a pineapple lying around, like I often do, then a little pineapple uh, wedge in the top so just gives it that extra tropical. What I'm hearing is for, to be inspired by joy, you have to be, you have to have music, but it also helps to have a pineapple around. It does have, are we, I think we we love the pineapple i love it i've actually used it in both um it features in both light and zesty and dark and spicy um so i have a lot of love for it um but light and zesty also has a, a quite different unique flavor um through the ink berry which is actually quite a key ingredient some people uh, so it is an ingredient that originated from south america and is now grown in colombia and peru uh, some people may have heard it referred to as Fisalis or a Cape gooseberry. It's a small orange berry with some quite tart flavors, a little bit of mango coming through, quite tropical, and it really packs a punch. Um, and I would just sort of sit and enjoy these as a snack um, and actually found out they worked really great as a flavor in Light and Zesty. So it's a little bit more unique and different in that in that respect. But so that um, that's a fruit I'm going to have to I'm going to have to look up because I know very little about it, but it sounds delicious. That idea that this tartness with, uh, with a hint of mango, this mang the sweetness of a mango, that uh, that sounds amazing. Um, yeah, balance with a bit of papaya, a little bit of pineapple, and then you also get your more traditional green botanicals like uh, coriander seeds, green cardamom, and uh, some also some slight spice hints. Well, I think that that spiciness as well is, is so important that, you know, you, you're not, this isn't something that you, that you drink down like a soda. This is something that you savor that gives pause for thought that allows you to, to really kind of dig into the complexity as much fun as it is, the complexity of, of what Ellie, of what you've created. Yeah. I think a lot of the time, um, I would say to people it, that they're, they're sippable drinks rather than gulpable. And also <laughs> They meet a different occasion to your regular soft drinks that you might, you know, if you're on the way to the office or, you know, you're quickly grabbing grabbing a sandwich for lunch and you might, you know, down uh, a can of Coke or whatever, you know, soft drink of choice. These are really when you want that more, more of an elevated experience, either it's kind of marking that point where you're finishing the day, um, you're closing down your laptop and you just want to kind of signal that relaxation moment or maybe you're going to meet some friends you want something to to take with you you don't necessarily want to drink loads that night maybe you're just trying to have uh, a booze-free week where monday we see a lot of customers where um people that drink kalenya and other alcohol-free drinks they don't want to drink during the week and maybe save that alcoholic cocktail for a friday or a saturday um but during the week, me personally, especially running a business, I want to be quite sharp. I want to be on my A game. And so having a few mojitos or <laughs> alcohol, alcoholic based drinks is uh, is not always great for, for the head the next day. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is really about for me, it's always been about health and wellness. Like I I do drink on occasion still. Um, but like you said, um, you want to be sharp. But I don't want to miss all these great occasions. And, and you mentioned the word signaling and, you know, this idea that at the end of the day, we can have this great, refreshing drink um, and just even the act of creating it. It signals these aspects in our life. It, it signals this, the idea of shutting down, of turning off one side of your life and opening up that, um, you know, opening up to the weekend or opening up to the end of the day to uh, to celebrate yourself as opposed to as opposed to your work. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know we humans we are uh, creatures of of habit and ritual, and um, and I think that rituals is really important to a lot of us. And I think you get to the end of the day and you are craving, and, and that's a lot of people 
a lot of the time where people give in and they're like, I'm just going to have that that alcoholic drink. Mm. But sometimes you switch that up for a, for a non-alcoholic drink and, and you're not craving that anymore. It was that refreshment and that kind of grown up sophistication that you were after and that flavor. And I think that's what that's what really hit me when I first took took time off alcohol for a substantial amount of time in January. It was like, I don't need the alcohol. I, I don't need alcohol to have a good night. I don't need alcohol to go and socialize with my friends. Um, and so I found myself drinking alcohol really as a, as a consequence of not really having anything else available to me. And I just thought, well, that's silly because I, uh, I want to live a healthier lifestyle. And so I'm consuming this byproduct of alcohol without really needing or wanting it. Um, and that, that kind of was really where it all started. Let's, well, I, you know, I find myself in, especially in social environments where I don't know why, but I feel more comfortable having something in my hand. And whether it's an alcoholic drink or a non-alcoholic drink is really irrelevant. It's just, I need something, I need something in my hand and I don't want to have to explain or justify or, you know, it's my narrative. Um, but I, but I do feel more comfortable and, and maybe that's part of that signaling or, or as you said, those rituals. Um, but to me, whether it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic, it's really irrelevant. It's just, I want something in my hand and I want it to be great. And in your, in the case of, uh, Caleno drinks, I want it to be joyful. So, um, so thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for, for kind of carving, carving that path. Well, Daniel, I really, I truly believe in a world where, and this has been my, I guess my. Um, dream from when I started I truly believe we can live in a world where we do go out or we do have friends over and it really the question isn't brought up and no one really cares Mm -hmm. who's drinking an alcoholic drink and who's not drinking an alcoholic drink it it, the question isn't even there and and I really truly believe we will get there it's just a matter of time yeah I mean you know that's something that I've kind of one of my mantras is we want to make the conversation not about why aren't you drinking, but what are you drinking? Like that's yeah. what, what exciting, delicious looking beverage are you drinking? Exactly. Exactly. And that's how, you know, we need to, to change the narrative and, and get people to understand that, that, that that's the way forward. But, you know, like any, any kind of major cultural shift, it takes time uh, and it takes understanding and it also takes awareness and an introduction to, to new flavors. So, I think we're, we're gradually getting there. Well, Ellie, I really appreciate the fact that you've started this and, and you've started your narrative from a position of joy, because a lot of the times this entire industry has been, even the words we use around it has been focused on what's not there. And by focusing on bringing joy on, on the positive aspects, on those better than aspects, um, that's a really important step to to changing this narrative from, as you said in the beginning, changing the narrative away from a punishment to, you know, this, this is joy inspiring and you have a greater appreciation for your community, for your friends, from those you're celebrating for yourself when you are more aware, more in the moment and more mindful. And uh, I feel that, you know, you've, this is a great positive, way forward and especially again for me that that inspiration that that idea that it comes from a place of joy and a celebration of joy um so thank you and the products are delicious we're really excited about having them really excited for you uh for everyone to to give these products a try um what i do recommend is the music and the pineapple. I think those are really important, really important pieces to the story. But it definitely starts with the drinks, uh, dark and spicy and light and zesty from uh, Kalinio. Uh, Ellie, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Daniel. A great, great conversation. And, and I hope that people listening have taken something away from today. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. And I really look forward to you checking out the site at betterroads.com and checking out Kalino drinks, um, dark and spicy, light and zesty. You have the occasions, you have the recipes, um, and now you even have the music. Again, thanks everybody. Have a great day, bye. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Alcohol Free Radio. We'd love to hear from you. Send us a message on social media or through email at hello at betterroads.com. 
Great to be here with you all together. Take care.